Hey artists, welcome back to our playground with Mrs. Vaughn. This week's artist had a start that was not the most honorable. Our artist this week is Michelangelo, and Michelangelo started as an art forger. That means a faker. What he tried to do is he created a cupid or an angel figurine, and he rubbed it with acidic earth to make it look old, and he sold it to an art dealer, and the art dealer believed it was real. The art dealer sold it to a cardinal named Cardinal Riario, who realized it was a fake, and he got really mad that he spent his money to buy a fake, so he demanded his money back. But he realized Michelangelo had talent, so what he did is he encouraged him to stay in Rome, and he stayed in Rome for about four years until he got his first commission. A commission is when they pay you to do a work of art before you actually do it. So he created his first commission called the Pietra, which you will see shortly. Even though he didn't start the most honorable way, he did have a very long and successful career. Enjoy learning about Michelangelo. Michelangelo was born in Italy in 1475 and died in Italy in 1564. His real name was, get this, Michelangelo di Lodovico Buonarti Simoni, but he was simply called Michelangelo. He was the eldest of five brothers. Most of his famous works were done before he even turned 30 years old. He was an artist during the Renaissance. The Renaissance is divided into two periods. The early Renaissance is when artists tried to copy the greats, focusing on symmetry. Michelangelo worked during the High Renaissance, where there was interest in perspective and space, which gave art more realism. In the Middle Ages, almost all the European art was religious, specifically Christianity and the Catholic Church. He was commissioned to create David, and it took a couple of years to finish this giant statue. He was provided with a tall, thin piece of marble that had been discarded. He worked on it secretly, not letting anyone see it until it was finished. It is his most famous work of art. The Pietra is the only piece of art that Michelangelo ever signed. Few fun facts about the artist. When he was older, he lived like a hermit and spent almost all of his time alone. He was quite rich, but lived in a complete mess. He was a poet and wrote over 300 poems. He was not proud of his work. In fact, he disliked many and criticized his creations. Near the end of his life, he destroyed many of his sketches. He did not want people to see this hard work. He was commissioned by the Pope to paint the ceiling of the Sistine Chapel. He thought of himself as a sculpture, but he agreed to paint it. It took four years, and it is 141 feet by 43 feet wide. There are nine scenes from the Bible and over 300 people. Some say he had to lay on his back on scaffolding to paint it, while others believe he stood on the scaffolding and reached up to paint. Either way, it's an incredible feat. Michelangelo was also an architect. St. Peter's Basilica was in the process of being built for 50 years when they hired Michelangelo to work on it. He was not actually finished before he died. It was completed after his death. He died at the age of 88, leaving behind amazing works in paint, poetry, sculpture, and architecture. Time to get your supplies together. First thing you need is a bar of soap, soft is best. The one we happen to have at home was ivory. The reason you want a soft soap is it's really easy to carve into it. If you have a hard soap, you can hurt yourself and it's really hard to control the carving. Second thing, you need non-sharp tools to carve into the soap. I have some examples below. A butter knife, a popsicle stick, an orange peeler, a fingernail, or a spreader, like a cheese spreader. The last thing you will need is a towel or newspaper to catch the mess. Hang tight, I will show you some of the supplies I used in the video that's following. Today we're gonna sculpt like Michelangelo. 
he had a very hard rock and had to use tools and chisel away. We need something a little easier. So we are gonna use soap and we're going to move some of the soap away to show the object we intend to make. I have a lot of tools here. Here's a butter knife and it has no sharp edge. This is a spreader for maybe cheese. This is also one I found in my drawer. It's not sharp. You can use a spoon. Also the one on the far right, the yellow, is an orange peeler. I have toothpicks in case I need them. And I read a little, trip, a little tip online that I thought was interesting. You can take a pencil and you can draw the very simple image you want to do on top of your piece of art. Or the helpful hint I read online, which I thought was really cool, was find a cookie cutter if you have one that fits within the shape when the size of your bar of soap and press it into that. And that created a design for me already. So I happen to have some snowflake cookie cutters and that's what I'm gonna use today. After I press it in, you can see my design there. Now I'm using this orange peeler. It has kind of a sharp edge. You can use any of your non-sharp tools to start moving away the soap around the object you drew. You could do a heart, you could do a flower, you could do a star, you could do a snowflake, anything very, very simple. So I'm following my design and I'm just dragging my tool away and carving the soap so the object I make will be highest and everything else will be lower. That's called relief. So enjoy as you watch me work on my bar of ivory soap. Every once in a while I have to clean off my tools because it gets a little gunky. Um, good news is I'm doing it on a very washable rug and when I'm done I'll shake off my soap and I'll just wash it which is perfect. Uh, and when I'm done with my art project if I want I can use my soap in the shower. My object of art will become useful. Have fun with this and I will check back in with you in a little while. Just clearing out more and more of the soap so my snowflake is higher and everything around it is lower you can go as deep as you want this is what I thought worked also can you see my words ivory I'm taking my little scraper and I'm scraping it off and the other fabulous tool we have for this is your finger soap kind of melts with the warmth of your finger so I can go around and use that to mold and smooth out my soap when I'm done. Every once in a while you'll see my finger come there and kind of smear it off. I'm smoothing the edges. Last thing I'm going to do, I think my snowflake looks a little bit more like a starfish. <laughs> so I'm going to change my object I'm doing today. And I'm going to draw some little designs with my toothpick in my little star or my snowflake flake to look at a little bit more like a starfish. Now on the lower area, you can leave it plain or if you wanna go in there and draw some designs, you're welcome to do that too. I think I'm gonna draw some designs because I'm really enjoying this project. Getting kind of near the end of my project, I just want you to see this mess I have made you, the artist, needs to be responsible for cleaning up and that's why it's so important to have something underneath. So be sure to clean up after yourselves. If you 
like what we did today at Art Playground, please hit the red button to subscribe to our channel.